Hello and welcome to CS230. This is Lecture 20 and this is Lesson 4. And in this particular lesson we're going to look at how we set up the ExpressJS routes and the associated controllers in order to um, implement our REST and API. So we need to go ahead and uh, we saw already that we had an app slash models directory and you may have seen already that we had a routes and controllers directory. So we create those two directories and into that we're going to create something that defines our routes. So um, the quotation.routes.js is our main file that will hold um, the routes and quotation.controllers.js will hold the controllers information. And so here's a simple, here's a simple one that we've set up already. Okay. So um, the routes and things will, will need access to controllers. So what happens is that you set up your route and um, as you've seen with our basic server, um, you use app dot get or app.post or put or delete or whatever it is in order to be able to, to associate uh, a, a route with a, a controller which and the controller would be just a function that handles that particular route so so um so this particular file then will um actually need to export um all of these routes to us okay and we're going to need the quotation controllers because they need to be accessed within the individual routes so we create a quotation by saying app.post slash quotations and we use the quotations.create. Okay, that's our um, quotations is basically our um, uh, uh, access to the controllers. And then, and you know, we might have different controllers and have different here in a separate file, you know, and we might have, um, well, we call it a different variable, which is much more sensible by calling it that. Um, get will retrieve all the quotations and it finds all. For example, um, uh, quotations, and we specify the actual ID here. If we want to retrieve a single quotation, find one, and then we have um, uh, to update a quotation specified by a quotation ID, and that's here. And you know, this is this is uh, Express manages to be able to convert this into um, a parameter that's accessible within the, the part of the request object a little bit later. Okay, and then we use put, and then we use delete, and this root system corresponds directly to the table that we looked at earlier in, um, in lesson two. Okay, so then we have controllers and the controllers then um, tell us about what we want to be able to do. So the controllers need access to a model because the controllers need to understand how to work with the data. So that's just why we created the data earlier. And um, and so we, we, um, we did this, so we create a, um, a quotation model here and it tells us a little bit of what the model looks like so then we create a new quotation and save it to a database using this particular function here and all this does really is um it uh, current not this controller does does nothing all it does it just shows that it works currently okay so um and it just sends a message to say that you've created something to the database and returns a message to the, to the server to the user that will find all find one update and delete and they're useful because these are just placeholder controllers and the actual controllers need to perform some kind of validation and error checks and so forth but that initial setup will get you working and and, and you'll you'll see that it's fine okay you could also include the default um route um, and that would you could actually include this as part of your quotation routes as well and then you could set up a, a, a function called root okay that allows us to be able to um send the information about my quotation app you know, that we had the last time. So you could include this as well if you wanted and um, um, in addition to the actual um, in addition to the routes associated with the actual rest.api. And this is a useful thing to do here because a little bit later you might find that we want to be able to um, do something useful with that. Um, like um, provide information about the actual RESTful API as well using OPA <laughs> Open API or Swagger or something. Okay, and we'll see about that a little bit later. Okay, so we can we can test all that and it will work just fine. Okay, so re the reality is we want to be able to work with a RESTful API. So let's have a look at how these things will work. So we extend the roots and the quotations. Um, sorry, we extend the roots so that we can manipulate the quotations. So this allows you to be able to create and save a new quotation. Okay, so here's one. Um, and you can see that um, exports.create, it has a request and a, a response. 
object. And we want to be able to um, create a quotation that insists that if there's no body contact here, then we haven't got anything from the user. So therefore, we can't create something. So if it is the case, so we get to this point, then we create a new quotation using the, the schema that we had earlier. And we take the value for quotation to be the quotation value that was passed as part of the request body, and the author will be the one that's passed as part of the author body. Then we save it to the database just using quotation.save. So it's really, really nice and simple with Mongoose. And then, you know, if that happens, then we return the data to the user, okay, to tell them and show them what data was, what, um, what data was saved to the database. Otherwise, we create an error, and we tell us some kind of error, and we say that the error count 500. And that's how to actually save a quotation. It's very straightforward and simple. We can retrieve all the quotations, okay, using this. Um, we can find, we use the quotation that find um, method here, okay, using this scheme. Okay, and then we just send and get a list of all the quotations back. And then we return those to the user. Again, there's an error in there. Or we can specify uh, and find a, a quotation based on an ID. Remember, there was a parameter quotation ID as part of the actual as part of the actual um, request. Okay, and then we can actually do some checks. Maybe the quotation was found. Was it, sorry, wasn't found. We get a 404 error. If it has been found, then later we might find that one doesn't have the object ID. Okay. Otherwise, we can just return the actual data. Okay. And then here we return the data. If there's an error, there are lots of different kinds of errors, and we handle all of those errors. And I'm not going to go through all of these because you can look at them yourself. But you can update a single quality quotation with validation by uh, modifying the data. So we can actually um, look and update a part of the quotation um, by just say changing the quote, for example, by using this particular route here. Um, so we can get a single, um, or we can, and we can delete a quotation by just looking at um, this one. Okay, so I'm going to set this up and show you. It's fairly straightforward to work as well. Um, we should see that they work. Let me. Um, so this is my server. I'm going to change the server to be my server final here. Okay, so I'm just going to select all here. So select all. Save this. I'm going to better look. Everything should be fine. Okay, I'm in my server. Okay, I'm connecting to the database, and we should be able to see if there are any quotations on the server. Then we should just do so. That, so that's fine. So we just look at quotations here, and if I check here, I'm already connected to my database here. There's nothing. I don't have any. And now let's um, curl here. Looking at quotations. And there's nothing. Okay, I don't have anything. There's nothing returned because we don't have any any anything in the in the actual database. So we could create one. And you'll see here I've created some from earlier. Okay, but we'll we'll look at how to do that testing in the next session. So we know it's fine, okay? And we should get some errors. Let's try to delete one. Um, uh, oh, we won't. We, we'll do it using Postman. That'll be fine. Okay, we leave it there, and we'll do some testing in the next session.